Want to learn about a rich gray paint color that may help your home look rich as well? Fake it until you make it, right? I had some requests to look at Dorian Gray by Sherwin-Williams, which is a fairly dark paint color that seems to be pretty popular wherever you need one of those darker neutral paints. And that's exactly what this is. So if you want to learn about it, this is the video for you. But not only that, I'm also going to give you some paint colors that go with it so you can put together an awesome color palette for your home. And if you do me the favor of clicking the like button for me, I'll sing you the first three seconds of a very popular song from 1999. No matter how hard I try. Bonus points if you can name that song. So if this is your first time watching an episode of Color Code, I normally talk about paint colors that are the starting point of an entire color palette that you're trying to put together. And although this is the case here, I wouldn't necessarily call Dorian Gray a color that most people would consider throwing all over their home. Dorian Gray would not necessarily be put into my main color category, which are those colors that you could easily continue throughout an entire home exclusively if you wanted. I come to this conclusion because I looked at its light reflectance value on the Sherwin-Williams website, which is really important information to be considerate of. This is the all important number to me, AKA, the LRV, and it tells us how dark the color is. It scores a 39, which means it reflects only 39% of the light that hits it. So it's in the darker half of paint colors that exist. If we're talking about exterior use, where you're using Dorian Gray on the outside of your home, 39 is actually a fantastic score because it means the color will not feel too subtle or washed out when illuminated outside. Generally speaking, you tend to want to use darker colors when painting outside because of the amount of light that is going to be inevitably hitting that paint color. There's no dimly lit rooms outside. It's one massive, very well lit room, at least for half the day. We'll get to interior uses in a second, but if you wanted to incorporate Dorian Gray as part of your exterior color palette, it's a very popular main body color to cover your home with. A large part of that is due to its depth, which we already talked about, but also its undertones, which are fairly neutral, but end up feeling like a slightly taupey gray that almost has this stone-like quality. It also has a touch of brown to prevent it from feeling blue leaning, and it's just enough to keep it relatively neutral when used outside. You won't see any strong green color casts coming through, which some earthy grays of this caliber can have. It just seems to be a pretty balanced gray altogether. You can also use it on a garage door if you wanted to, maybe go a bit lighter on the main body of the house so you still have that contrast and the color is neutral enough where it's not gonna pull too much focus. Now, as an interior paint color, does Dorian Gray feel warmer or cooler generally? Well, that's an interesting one because Sherwin-Williams placed it in a couple of color palettes with cool in the name, which may lead you to believe that it's a cold looking color. But I would say that it still barely qualifies as being on the warmer side of gray, mainly because it doesn't feel blue leaning in the slightest. In fact, it's touch of brown gives it a slight red or even purple undertone. And I guess depending on your lighting, it can sometimes be pushed to a very slight green undertone, but that's a rarity. Even if that ends up happening, I welcome those little subtle undertone shifts with neutrals because oftentimes people try and just match everything up perfectly, but I think there are benefits to having some neutrals that are a bit warmer and others that are a bit cooler, even in the same space. Now let's get into some of the color pairings for Dorian Gray. And the first one is my light color pairing. It's Eater White by Sherwin-Williams. This is the color that I would actually deem as the main color of this palette, which is going against the grain of other episodes of Color Code, but I see Dorian Gray as more of a secondary or a supportive color to something like Eater White. The good thing is they share a lot of similarities where they are based in gray with a brown warmth that gives it a taupey or a rougey gray feel. Rouge. Eater White has a 73 LRV, which is actually quite dark for a white paint color. So we'll label it correctly as an off-white that you can use as the empty blank canvas color to throw in the main areas of your home, like your hallways and your foyers and your other yays as well. <laughs> Using these two colors together is pretty simple. You can have Eater White as a trim color for Dorian Gray. You could have Dorian Gray as an accent color for Eater White, or you can have them as fairly moderate upper and lower cabinet colors together. They're pretty easy to use alongside one another because of their similar framework, 
undertone wise. The second coordinating color is a gray that goes in a different, almost complementary direction. And if you don't know what that means in color theory, it's opposing colors on the color wheel. So they are really kind of polarizing. We have a little bit of red and green happening here. Comfort gray gives me a lot of comfort because of its soothing, cool green quality. It's a very tranquil color that resonates with me quite a bit because I love green based grays because they don't feel quite as frigid as blue based ones. It gives you a little more flexibility and versatility. Even though green is technically cooler in terms of color theory, it's a transitional color that bridges the gap between warm and cool. It's sort of a muted minty artichoke green that will look subtle, but provides a very different look compared to Dorian Gray. It'll help enhance the brown aspect in it for some added dimension within this color palette. Of all the colors, Comfort Gray will likely be the standout color because of its difference in color temperature. The dark color pairing here is a bit more conservative because it is another fairly neutral muted deep gray. You could describe it as a darkened and deep version of Dorian Gray, but it does have more of a cooler charcoal feeling to it overall. Still not quite as cool as Comfort Gray, but for a deep color, it feels like the connective tissue between all of the other colors in this palette. It's Hewlett Ore, and it has a 16 LRV, which is the darkest color we're going to talk about today, but it's not quite dark enough to feel like a variation of black paint. It really is a very dark gray. And there is a difference between the two. The coordinating white color is Snowbound, which is one of my favorite off-whites to use alongside earthy grays and taupes, which most of these colors are based on. Its warmth isn't rooted in yellow, but rather gray and beige, keeping it a soft neutral, which is really easy to work with. Conveniently enough, I did a dedicated review on it back when I had a silly looking ponytail. So click here if you wanna see that piece of work.